All right, everybody. I'll do a quick. In, we'll do a quick round of introductions, and then we'll get into it. Um, my name is Marie Norden. I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. But I've been involved in Fedora way before I was the F Cake, um, working on Fedora badges, as Ben mentioned, um, and a part of the design team. Went to all the flocks and stuff like that, and eventually made my way here, supporting the lovely Fedora community. Anurag, would you go ahead? Thank you, Marie. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Anurag. I'm from Fedora Mindshare uh, elected members. I'm also working with Fedora GDSC as well. I'm doing. A, uh, I'm also a member over ten years. I'm doing a lot of different uh, contribution, various contribution around Fedora. And today, hopefully, we're going to talk about how to join Fedora and contribute to Fedora as well. Thank you. Cool. So we are definitely just winging this, as you might have heard. Um, one of our presenters couldn't make it today, um, which is very sad. Some yeah. airport, plane, you know, all that stuff. So I've done this presentation before, but me and Anurab haven't shared it. So we're going to go back and forth a little bit, our best, <laughs> uh, to make it as coordinated as possible. And Anurab, if there's something I'm missing you want to add in, just feel free to interrupt, and I'll kind of go the same. Sure, sure, sure. I'll, I'll try to finish, finish make your sentences at finishing. We'll see. <laughs> cool. So what are we talking about today? Um, we're going to talk about who and what Fedora is how Fedora is organized, how to join Fedora, how to start contributing, and a couple of tips on becoming a successful contributor. Um, we hope that there's also questions uh, that we can answer for people, so don't be shy. Use the Q&A tab, and we will get to those at the end. So first, we're going to talk about who and what is Fedora. So we are a huge global community. We're from all over the world. And we come together to develop tools, software, and materials to promote free and open source software, and very specifically, our operating system, Fedora. Um, here's a, a nice picture from the before times of all of us at Flock. I think this was Poland. Poland, correct. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Marie, side note, uh, yeah. I was just behind you in the picture. If you check closely, we were together in that picture. So I'll say something. Anuralp and I didn't meet until we went COVID times, and we yes. were like, we were at the same events. How did we not meet? So and we are in the same. We are we are even together in that picture. It's Literally quite possible picture. to go to these conferences and not even meet everybody. <laughs> All right. So uh, the vision. This is our vision statement, and the Fedora Council puts together the vision for Fedora, and what they have drafted is the Fedora Project envisions a world where everyone benefits from free and open source software built by inclusive, welcoming, and open-minded communities. So we, tr we truly try to walk that talk every day in the decisions that we get, we make as a community together and the work that we do together. And next is our mission. So vision, big picture, missions, like the very concrete, this is what we do. So Fedora creates an innovative platform for hardware, clouds, and containers that enables software developers and community members to build tailored solutions for their users. Cool. So do you want to talk about the four foundations, Anurul? Of course. Uh, Fedora Foundation is actually one of my oldest knowledge about Fedora as well, because when you join Fedora, uh, uh, first things you see if you get into the website on Wiki when you try to explore what is Fedora, you will see four foundation, which is one of our core four uh, <clears throat> foundations. Uh, because we are not just operation system, we are not just a distribution. We are also a community, and community means people, and it's also about uh, technologies and the futures we bring it into the Fedora, and we try to do. A, also uh, as first as possible as we can and the, and this four fund uh, four foundation is uh freedom which is we are open source and open community and open-minded we uh, we discuss everything openly and freely in a in a friendly environment and friends is about being a community doesn't mean we just have to work and do uh, do, do do the work and do just coding or designing no 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 
it's also about making friends. And when I joined Fedora, I have many friends. Like even Marie mentioned, we, we got this COVID situation now become a, a good friends as well. And we talk each other. Then I joined Mindshare thanks to her. So this is also one of the outcome. And one of the good outcome is uh, just a tiny memory as well. I would like to share uh, some of the people from Europe also visited me in Turkey and I was showing them around. They are trusting me as a friend, as a further contributor to share their we share our culture, we share our values as well. So it just, as I said, doesn't mean just a just a distribution. It's about being a friend, being a, being in the team and feeling you are you have an, another family. You have to be welcome you and help you out every steps. And if we talk about futures, it's about always about bringing the latest and stable uh, releases of every single federal releases, as you may know, and Fedora 26, uh, when it comes up, we got a new GNOME desktop distribution. Uh, GNOME desktop has been landed, and we have new cool features from TDA. We have another cool features from the back scene and all kinds of other stuff. And we also bring so many new features like Pipewire, Valent, and all kinds of stuff is also about our future. And next to addition to that, we are also trying to do it as a first distribution, try to put it in stable and a good environment and we share with the people, get their feedback and harness them and make it even better. That's why our foundation is very core of the Federal and very important to everyone. You want to take this slide too? Yeah, yeah of course. Well, when it's come to Federal deliverables, I see many pins or alternative into the Federal. Of course, when you get into the website, as you can see, uh, Federal Workstation on the on the main page. But we are not just a workstation; we are also a server, IoT, always Silverblue, and recently, Pinoite also has been released, PDA variant of uh, Silverblue, and we have also Spins and Labs. And thank you, Neil. We have also Cloud on on that <clears throat> list as well, and Federal has. If I remember correctly, approximately 39 different desktops, and a lot of them also uh, is uh, become a release, uh, become a spins as well. And if you check the list in here, you see EDA, XFC, LXQT, Mate, Cinnamon, and more. And some of them is just as a specific uh, target in Fedora. For example, Neuro is about neurotechnology for design so it is about designing and also drawing and all kinds of stuff when it's come to gaming you can choose games as well and this is all kind of different options this exists in fedora so you can based on your selection and choices you can make your desktop or server even better cool so i just want to follow up on that and say there's groups behind each one of ah, yeah. these deliver uh, or these additions, the spins and labs. So if you're interested mm -hmm. in a specific one, you can get involved with that, what we call special interest group to start contributing. And it could just be, you know, bugs, like you're reporting bugs, or it could be, hey, I would really like to see this feature because of X, Y, Z reason, or you could suggest another piece of software to add to one of the spins or labs. I'm not sure which one that's appropriate for, but you can get involved and kind of help to shape what these um, deliverables are. Exactly. All right, so I'll take this one. So sure. there are a ton of benefits to contributing to Fedora. Um, personally, I've grown so much from being a part of the Fedora community. It really opened my eyes to so many different things, but I'm from the US. I hadn't really had in friends internationally before I got involved in Fedora. And that really just opened my mind to how the world works in a bigger way. Sometimes we just kind of live in our own little boxes. But um, being a part of Fedora, it you connect with people, you learn new things, you expand your network professionally or just friends wise. Um, it can give you a sense of fulfillment, giving back to your community. Um, it's something you could put on your resume. You know, if you're trying to get ahead um, or just, you know, get that job that you really want, um, putting, putting contributions to open source communities 
can take you a very long way there. Um, and obviously just for fun. I hope everyone's having fun at this release party. And I hope that, you know, working on Fedora stuff brings you joy. Um, it has always brought me an immense amount of joy. So that's one of the reasons I'm also involved. And I was talking about this earlier um, in the wallpaper session. Um, part of my background is a designer and my, I'll just keep it short. In my experience um, in art school it was like very competitive, right? But when I came into the open source design world, it was not that. It was like accepting and we're all doing this together and we're handing back and forth files, which if you know about competitive graphic design or the art world, that's not something that happens a lot. So you have a chance to collaborate and learn from people with all different experience levels. And of course, swag. Um, People love swag, that. yeah, <laughs> people love swag and there's no shame in, in coming and hanging out to get some swag because, hey, it just promotes Fedora even more. Cool, so we can move on to our next section here. Um, how is Fedora organized? So I'll talk a little bit and on and if you want to add in, you can too. Yeah, sure, sure. So, you take the you take the sound, you gotta take some sides. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So Fedora is huge. And it can this this map here might seem a little overwhelming. Um, but I promise that all of these people who are running these teams are accessible to you. Um, so right in the middle there you have the Fedora Council. The Fedora Council is making high-level decisions for the project. And then Coming off of that, you have Mindshare, FESCO, Objectives, and the Diversity and Inclusion. So those are all very much connected to the council. And I guess you would say that they're the next level uh, below the council, right? So Mindshare focuses on Fedora's promotion, marketing, everything that's not coding pretty much goes onto the Mindshare side of Fedora. So you're gonna see over there, our comops, which is ambassadors, um, the join SIG, advocates, marketing. Then you also have like mentored projects. You have our internationalization efforts. You have the podcast, the community blog, the magazine, all these different places. These are all um, places for non-coders to get involved. And I'll say this, we need you so much. <laughs> um, we need people who our coders, obviously, we're always looking for more people to do development and packaging and all that stuff. But not a lot of people, like it's slowly but surely coming to light that we need more than just those technical, quote unquote, contributors. We need every, every part of an organization, a regular organization, we also need that in Fedora. Um, I'll also point out that diversity and inclusion team, we're actually rebranded to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So this does need an update. Um, and th those groups are focused on a couple of different events that we do yearly. There's Fedora Week of Diversity, Fedora Women's Day. We just kicked off and did our first Fedora Mentor Summit. Um, and they also support some of the mentored projects as well. Um, and then I'm gonna leave the objectives and FESCO to you. Hey, <laughs> well, uh, objectives are basically is what are we going to do in next releases and years in Fedora? It's not just about uh, technologies we would like to think about to bring it in. It's about also bringing uh, about uh, which uh, contributors and other Fedora community objectives you would like to target as well. So it's also very important that uh, these objectives are is basically uh, is basically is coming uh, from federal contributors and based based on collective idea we would like to basically uh, put it out there and get the feedbacks from the community and based on that action we also harness it and make it better and also to try to do it and we complete the task and it's also definitely feels you good because once we got an objective and completed and when you become a federal contributor it definitely feels you good to do that objective as well uh about fesco is federal engineering steering committee is about 
uh, is federal technical uh, side of the, the war. So when it's come about um, federal release releases, uh, changes, uh, like if something's going to be definitely critical in Fedora, that's required Federal Energy Committee statement. And it's also about uh, packager status, if you're active or inactive, on all kinds of technical set of the uh, federal <clears throat> situations goes over there. And you can even run for federal, uh, federal, federal Engineering Steering Committee as well and become part of it. And if you want to have an agenda, have a better idea, if you want to put it out there, put your words, or you can do it as well. Uh, any federal contributor can become FESCO member as well if they wanted to run for it, of course. Uh, being a FESCO has a lot of responsibility. Uh, it's not just uh, doing some coding. You have to also do a lot of uh, work around people as well to, and decisions is also very important to, to, to um, it's all connected in main point in federal council and which is we all basically a one giant community. Awesome. Um, as I said, don't forget to put any questions in the Q and A. We're definitely open to them. Um, so we talked a little bit about them on the last slide. I don't need to go too deep into this one, but it is good to just reiterate these are the governing bodies in fedora right so yes. if you're like i think something um i think fedora should be focused on this as a whole you would go to the fedora council and say hey i have this idea and i think it should be something that you you know keep in mind say you want to put something into a fedora like the next fedora release right you would go to the fedora engineering steering committee and propose yeah. a change to them and then say you might want to run an event or get some swag for your local uh, Linux user group, right? You would go to the Mindshare committee to ask for something like that. So, like <laughs> right, these groups are accessible to you and you are welcome to come to them and ask for things for Fedora. Um, and I hope that people feel comfortable doing that. Cool. Also, uh, just one oh. side point I would like to add is, yep. If you, any committee you ask if your question could be on off topic or something unrelated, don't afraid, just got any part of the member will try to point you the right direction as well. Uh, every question doesn't have to be true. We understand you. It's a big community. You have to understand a lot of stuff. We won't judge you. We was trying to point you the right direction. Don't be afraid. We'll always be here for you. Yes, absolutely. Cool. So how do I join the Fedora community? So we have this awesome team called Fedora Join, and they are there just to greet newcomers. So they're just hanging out in a channel, hoping and waiting <laughs> um, for new uh, contributors or interested people to show up. Um, and they're going to help you do a couple things, right? They're going to help you get your Fedora account. They're going to help you like introduce you to documentation in your areas of interest. Um, they're going to potentially help you find a mentor um, to, to, you know, someone kind of directly to ask questions to because it can be a little overwhelming asking questions and, you know, just like a public channel. So sometimes it's nice to have a mentor. Um, and then just a, a channel that's just for newbies. So that's like the ask any question that you need support with channel. Um, there's no wrong questions anywhere, like Anurag was saying, but this is a place specifically for newcomers to ask those beginner questions that all of us have. Um, the next, okay. So we're looking for potential, not polish. You don't have to come with a lot of skills to Fedora. Like you can just say, hey, this, this community inspires me the foundations behind this community inspires me. Someone I met inspired me to be here. And you don't have to come with like, you know, I can code in these 10 languages and I, you know, I'm familiar with all this software for design or editing or whatever. Like you can just come as you are um, and, and we can help you find a place. So if you think this sounds great, what are the next steps? All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make a Fedora account. I bet a lot of people here already have Fedora accounts, but I hope for, that- for, for the badges. <laughs> I hope that people see this on YouTube later too, 
So first step is to make a Fedora account. Um, you could do that at, you can just search Fedora account system yeah, and it should pop right up for you. Um, and that's used to, you know, you can log into all the Fedora sites with that Fedora account, you know, discussion and element now chat, um, Peugeot, the wiki. So that's, that's your key to get into all of these Fedora platforms. And after you have your Fedora account, you can go speak with the join team. And the join SIG will open a ticket for you um, to basically kind of have your introduction, right? So you can ask questions on that ticket. They're going to give you links to documentation. Um, you know, that's kind of a great place to just have a starting base, right? And after a little bit, they will actually check in with you and say, how's it going? Is there anything we can help you with? So, um, yep, that's kind of what I was just saying. I didn't realize this was coming up next. But yes, we do the introdu introduction. Uh, we help you do the exploration. We check in, see how it's going. If you need some more support or information, happy to give that to you. So from there, what happens? So there's all kinds of roles in Fedora. So this is broken out into coding roles and non-coding roles. Anurag, do you want to take the coding roles? Go for it. Of course. The coding roles is about uh, Fedora. For, for example, we have Fedora packaging. Packager is basically bringing the source application of Fedora. Uh, sorry. Um, we let you say you have found an application doesn't exist in Fedora and you would like to bring it in into the Fedora. What you can do is you can make an RPM package which in Fedora in certain rules and you can basically package it for us and you can submit a review. And one of the experienced packagers is going to be reviewed for you. Once your review is complete, you have to also find the sponsor. Once you got the sponsor, you can ask in around in development list, another list, basically you can bring it in Fedora. I think we need a briefer description just because we won't get there's like 16 of these <laughs> so go ahead yeah. go ahead on yeah. okay i will i will handle that uh once you complete your all kind of uh steps you will basically have a packaging Fedora. you have to maintain it so some of the uh this uh let me encrypt some pieces uh, what is in packagers? Packagers are is basically a person who's responsible of the package you bring it into the Fedora. And the proven packagers is basically is an experienced packager has a more power over and all the Fedora pack packages. And submits uh, sorry reviews is basically you have to go to the certain website in Fedora in Bugzilla and you have to open it in certain format to. Submit your package. There are a lot of details about it. Uh, if you're going to cover them all, it's going to be an entire talk. So I will not go not much of a detail. This is just a brief explanation of the packaging. And um, release engineering is basically about uh, is how to maintain different tools, utilities, also checking uh, package stability and upstream uh, situations and all kind of technical. Uh, technical uh, topics. Quality assurance is basically one of our key points in Fedora. When we do every single releases, we also have to test every Fedora releases. And also we have to check, we have also certain packages has to work properly and has to be a stable uh, state. If we don't stabilize it, we are basically delaying releases uh, but we are in the in the same time we're trying to fix that uh, problem, uh, if possible internally, uh, not not internally in in Fedora, or we go to the upstream try to fixing it. So once we complete this uh, certain bugs and problems, Fedora will be released. And as you some people may notice that this release is slightly delayed because we have a certain bugs we have to fix it before presented to people, because we want to have the best and clean experience in Fedora so everyone can basically install it without any problem or upgrade without any problem. Uh, Marie, do you want me to check, take this one as well? Sure, but I give a little bit less background. We gotta get, we're, okay, we have six sorry. minutes left. Sure, uh, Fedora, <laughs> 
Fedora infrastructure is basically about Fedora servers. If you want to help him on that, you can go there. If you want to make our websites maintain and in front end or back end, we have website and app development. If you want to translate um, apl application or certain Fedora tools or beyond that, you can join Fedora internalization team and help about it to translate the language, which is basically. Cool. Oh. So I'll do yeah, the non coding roles. Thing. Yep, sure. absolutely. So we're talking about internationalization, which works with Bloodlake. We also have translation. So that's just, you know, folks going to our documentation and translating it into their into a language that they know. Um, so it's less to do with the operating system, more to do with our documentation and all of the stuff that surrounds the community. Um, we also have community outreach, and there's multiple teams that work on that. But off the top of my head, Ambassadors is the number one uh, outreach team. And then we have advocates who run small events, and we have the community operations team, which kind of supports all of those. We have the diversity, equity, and inclusion team. As I mentioned, they work a lot on events, but we also try to help influence how Fedora is basically moving and we want to make sure that accessibility and inclusion are something that we're always keeping in mind. Um, we also have a very strong graphic design team um, and we also have more and more folks showing up who are interested in doing UI UX work. So it's front end development for websites. Um, we have a podcast team. We have the Fedora magazine. So if you're into writing, we have the magazine. And then we also have the community blog. So you can, they're kind of like user focused is the magazine and then community focused is the comp blog. Um, we have a documentation team. That's more of technical writing and updating documentation. We have a program management team run by our lovely program manager, Ben Cotton. And they come and help assist with projects or initiatives that you might be working on. We have a great mentorship program. We're actually looking for more um, other programs to be involved in. But in the past, we've done GSOC and we've done outreachy for, I don't know, like 20 sessions in a row. We really do well with the outreachy program. So, right. So those are a, a general overview of the non-coding and coding roles. But if you saw something you're interested in that wasn't there, those are just the overviews. Those are like the most common ones. So if you have something you want to do in Fedora, don't be shy, ask where those people are doing that. All right, so how do I become a successful contributor? So we're, we all started as volunteers, we all started as newbies at one point, whether it was 20 years ago like some of us or six months ago or two months ago. Um, and so all it takes is practice and observation, right? So there's gonna be a time commitment that's involved if you, you know, decide to commit to being a part of Fedora and contributing, you know, something that makes a community great is the trust that we build with each other. And part of that trust is saying, hey, I'm going to do this thing and then doing it, right? So there is some of a, somewhat of a time commitment there. Um, also observation, how do the team, how do the teams work? What's the team communication style? Um, and if you ever run into a problem, there is a code of conduct. Just want to point that out. So if you're seeing things that you don't think should be happening, um, there is a way to report that. Um, but hopefully everything you observe will be good. Um, so, But it's good to know how a team works, how they communicate together. Um, and also, you want to pick something that's important to you, right? So something that's going to excite you, something that's going to bring you joy. Um, you want to pick something that's going to make you happy and motivated, right? So don't try to jump into the deep end by picking up like a huge task, right? That is not, the, that's kind of a way to ask, uh, to sign up for failure. Um, try something small to start, right? And then from there, you can kind of build and grow upon that. Um, you want to potentially look for a mentor or a sponsor, someone who you can ask questions to in a, like a very non-judgmental or at least a, pri a more private venue where you can ask these questions and then try to stay busy, you know, hang out, come to our events, um, hang out in the chat channels and and stay involved. So, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for, for it. Sure. 
also uh also keep that in mind a couple of stuff don't burn out yourself don't uh be afraid from making a mistake everybody can make a mistake uh experienced contributor will definitely help you out and don't be afraid say your mistake if you do something wrong or slightly think it could be wrong or of course you can do true uh, correct as well that's that's of course awesome but that doesn't mean we're going to uh makes you feel worse or not good as dan said experience it's also about experience making a mistake also gives you more experience and more uh talents based on the knowledge you want to learn about it Ben's coming on screen to tell us we're almost out of time. But since the yeah, next yeah. one's an AMA with just a little, little bit longer. Yeah. Um, yeah, little but little I will little. say, I, just to reiterate on Rob's point, don't let yourself be burnt out. There's nothing in Fedora that is more important than your health, both mentally and physically. Also, and, if you don't have a time, if you think something doesn't going to finish at the time you think, try to say it, try to pass on to your team contributor because we will just basically doing in our free time, doing on our time. It doesn't mean you have to finish it. I understand people have a life as well. Don't afraid of it. Yeah. So, right, we pointed out the code of conduct already, but because we're from all over the world, we have all different cultures, backgrounds, beliefs, and beliefs about free software as well, you know, sometimes conflicts happen. It's inevitable. And it comes down to each of us to make sure that we keep our community happy and healthy. So how do we do this? Be considerate and be respectful. You know, you don't know what kind of day someone's having. You don't know how much work someone put into something. You don't know what's going on in somebody's life behind the scenes. So just try to approach with consideration and respect for your fellow contributors. And thank you so much for listening. I know we're just slightly over time and I don't see any Q&A, so if there's none, we could wrap it up. We, we did the best talk then. <laughs> we can absolutely share um, links to the slides. I think we're going to add them into the wiki. <laughs> this does need to, so apparently we need to do some updates here. Um, oh, Freenode's not here. It's on Libero chat. Oh, it's Libero chat. It's fine. We're we good. Have, we shared everything's properly. <laughs> All right. I hope everyone had uh, learned a lot or was just like nostalgic the whole time because you've been a part of Fedora for so long. <laughs> um, and thanks again for listening.